This is the 10th and final Oasis workshop of the semester. We're going to be talking about web drawing and games. So what that means is we're going to be discussing how we can draw on the web um, using creative uh, methods that fall under the umbrella of creative coding and how we can use some of these methods to be, uh, how we can use some of these methods that also create games. So presenting today are, will be myself, um, Chris Myers, the Oasis uh, workshop coordinator for this semester and uh, Corey 22. A fun fact about me is that I can, um, I can juggle with two balls and, or one. And also, also Fiona Gridley is, will be jo uh, joining us as well. She's the head UX designer at Sandbox. Hello and everyone. Is... Um, fun fact, I got bit, this, I don't know if this is a, it's a fun fact now. It wasn't a fun fact at the time. I got bit by a stray dog when I was um, in Thailand last fall. That was fun, getting rabies shot. Well, I didn't even know dogs could get rabies, so that was a very fun fact. Awesome. So today, just to go over the agenda really quick, we're going to be talking about creative coding, what it is, um, why we do it. We're also going to be talking about processing the library. Um, um, I know maybe you've heard of it, but it's a really useful one. We're going to be talking about how we actually go about drawing and making these games on the web. And then we're going to go over p5.js, a JavaScript library uh, that we're going to be using to uh, make our visualizations. We're going to have some questions, Kahoot, and then we're going to make the game. So let's get started. OK, so creative coding. what? What does that even mean? Um, I mean, I guess all coding is somewhat creative, but cr creative coding is a certain uh, subcategory of coding where we use programming to make something that's really artistic and visual. So before maybe in web development, we're just making web pages or things like that, or web develop design, which is cool, but it's more utilitarian. We're making it for the purpose of achieving a task, like making a personal website or making an app that helps people out. Creative coding, is when you code things that don't necessarily accomplish a goal, but just look really, really cool. And um, as you can see from these visualizations on the right, and it's using entertainment, art, prototyping. Um, this next slide is a few more examples straight off of Google, um, but people made these visualizations using code. So uh, it's just like any other artistic process, uh, creative, code, creative coders will find an idea or inspiration They'll sketch it out, probably out, um, out, outside of code, and they'll devise an algorithm and the code to actually implement that. So whoever wanted to make that little um, terrain over on the right there decided that they wanted to do that. They came up with an algorithm to uh, do that, and then they used a creative coding library, which we're going to talk about later, to actually make it happen. Um, so what are these creative coding libraries? So obviously, like maybe you've used like HTML or like Racket or something. How, could you, how do you possibly make some of these things using these languages? Well, you don't. So there's other libraries in, um, out there, libraries being just code someone else writes that lets us do other cool stuff in code that let us do these more easily. And a really popular one is called processing. So let's talk about that a bit. Um, but what, what is processing? Uh, it's kind of, it's uh, I guess some, a little bit more of the, one of the more well-known ones. This is one of the first open source uh, creative coding libraries, a graphics library. And uh, it was actually originally developed to teach non-programmers how to code. So it's a graphics library for Java, and it also provides its own IDE, but it uses Java at its core. But it gives it a bunch of extra functions that let you easily do drawing stuff, like drawing rectangles or circles or some much more uh, gradients or a lot more uh, complicated, interesting stuff. Uh, so. It's designed to be kind of like an intro language. That said, it's also still used, um, which we'll get to in a moment. It's still used for much more high, uh, complicated things as well. But it was actually was originally designed to teach people how to code. So it's kind of cool that's used for other purposes besides that. So as we mentioned, this library they made to teach you how to code, to draw stuff. It's from 2001. Is it still even relevant? Like, is it even worth knowing? Yes. So. 
Uh, it's still used by students, researchers. It's used by people all over the world to do complicated things. It's actually very powerful. Um, and it's actually spawned of quite a few spinoff libraries. So we mentioned it's Java. It's just kind of like for making these desktop things, but there's also libraries like Arduino, which is not really for drawing, but it's the same for a principle with very simple syntax. Um, and also this one called p5.js, which lets us do the same drawing stuff, except instead of doing it in this window, we do it in our web browser. So people can use it on the web. We'll get to that a little bit more in a moment. The takeaway here is processing is an IDE and a, job, a library for doing graphic, um, for drawing graphics pretty easily. So uh, let's talk about how we actually do some of this drawing on the web a little bit. That's muted. Um, so one of the ways that we can do this is HTML and CSS. So this is like, a way that is sort of the more basic way. Um, it's pretty easy to pick up. HTML and CSS are meant to be pretty easy, but it can get pretty complicated if you're trying to do any sort of complex visualizations or drawing, just because you have to like write out all of the CSS code um, and you it's harder to do things more procedural, which means like writing a a code writing code that will generate its own images. Um, so it can tend to be a lot of coding and very complex and like make like not very readable code. Um, and so we when creative code when coding creatively, you want to focus on the expression and not writing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lines of CSS. So here's an example of how you might draw something simple like a tree in CSS. So basically, we you would create two divs, as you can see below, um, and the class equals tree, class equals trunk, and then you style those using CSS. But you can see that each of those um, divs require four to five, looks like four to six lines of code just to make them like their size and their color. But we using something like p5.js, we can make that a little bit simpler. So libraries like p5.js and other JavaScript libraries provide abstraction for drawing, which makes it easier to draw and update the screen with, J with JavaScript. So another thing like with CSS is you can't loop through and change the drawing. You can do CSS animations, but trying to generate um, drawings with like recursively is much more difficult in Java in CSS, whereas with JavaScript, we can basically create a loop that will run constantly and can change your drawing as like throughout time. So here's an example using p5.js, and you can see how much shorter this code is. So basically, we're just setting up the canvas, and then you're just saying, draw a green circle and then draw a brown rectangle. And so this is a lot simpler. We're not having to like create imaginary divs and then style them with CSS. We're directly creating a green circle and a brown rectangle. So as you can see, 10 lines in p5.js versus 24 lines in HTML and CSS. So p5.js in a nutshell is basically um, taking processing, it was based on processing, but importing that as a JavaScript library for creative coding. Um, and so it's taking that drawing, that easy like visualization and drawing ability into the web instead of having to create desktop applications or something that you might need a special IDE to run. And you can run it anywhere on the web um, that supports JavaScript. So you can draw right in your browser. So here are some examples. Um, you can see like these are really cool and would be super like I can't even imagine how you would create something like that in CSS. That would be a complete nightmare. 
And so how do you use P5.js? The easiest way is to directly import the library um, using a script tag in the HTML head. And so that basically allows you to use that code in your website. And then you create a new JavaScript file and link to that in your page, again, using the script tag. And then there are two main functions, both in P5.js and in processing. It's the same way. You, um, there's a setup function, which runs once to initialize anything that you need, like initial variables, loading um, other libraries, loading images or data. And then there's a drawing function is it, is my audio cutting out? I just saw the chat. Does it seem okay? To, okay, thank you. Um, and then the draw function, which if you're familiar with Fundies one is similar to the Big Bang function. So it basically runs constantly. Um, and then in that code is where you would actually draw all of your visualizations. And because it's running infinitely, you can update with each loop um, and like have animations or changes in your visualization. So here is an example of a very simple um, P5.js file. So this, um, you can see the setup, which creates the canvas. That's basically saying like, I want to draw on this canvas of these specific window widths and heights. And because this is a simple file, we're not, we don't need to load any data or images or anything in that setup function. We're just saying, hey, this is where we're gonna draw. Um, and how big that drawing is going to be. And then this draw function, even though in this file, like it's just drawing a red circle and a blue circle. And so it's going to draw those infinitely, like so that image would not change. But if you wanted to change, you could use variables and like say count up the variables so that the circle moves across because that circle, um, those numbers in the parentheses would be size and location variables. Um, so you can change those and say like count up one of the X or Y. And so you can um, move that circle across the screen. So it's not evident in this code itself that it's running in indefinitely. Um, but you can see like once we start using variables that how that draw function works. So this is, yeah, um, this is a closer view. Basically the setup function runs once only at the beginning when you start that um, file, start that program, and then draw just runs until you close that program. So what about games? It's in the title of the workshop. Um, so we can also use P5.js to create games. There is interactivity um, like functions and uh, methods in, built into P5.js. So it can track mouse um, movement. It can track keyboard click or keyboard presses. It can track mouse movements so that you can use this like visualization to actually create interactive programs and create games. So um, I can also, I, my experience with processing and P5.js, I've mostly used processing. Um, I first started using it when I took a class at Northeastern called uh, Programming Basics in the CAMD College. And then from there, I also used it on some personal projects and then took a dialogue last summer to Austria. Um, and we, that one of the classes on the dialogue was a creative coding class. And as part of that class, I did a, um, we went to a museum in Austria called Ars Electronica. And the facade of the museum is actually like light panels. And so I can share my screen, Chris, and show the video. Um, oh, it's disabled. Should be enabled. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay. 
So I can show you the, a picture in the daylight of what the museum looks like. So basically they've set up the facade of the museum so that you can upload processing files to the the like controller of this museum. This is what the museum looks like in the daytime. And then at night it can be lit up um, and it can basically run a processing visualization on the facade of the building. And so we took a workshop um, at this, oh, um, it stopped screen sharing. Hold on. Let me share again. So we were able to create a, if this will run, create a visualization on the side of the building. Um, and because of the nature of the building, like we didn't want to create anything I wonder if this is because um, it shouldn't be so. Um, but basically, we were able to create a visualization on the side of the building. Um, there it goes. That's better. And run a program that we created within processing using some special like library functions that they had created specifically for how the building like interacts. Um, and we were able to create this visualization, which was really cool. And it was interesting to see how like this can actually be applied to real life because they this museum invites artists from all over the world to create visualizations for the side of their building and so it was cool to like be a part of that um it's a five minute video so i won't make you watch the whole thing but it was it was a really cool experience so yeah So I guess so just to sum all that. Go ahead. I just to sum all that up. Uh, takeaway here could be just creative coding. It's um, you know it's not like a language itself. It's just it's like a different approach to programming where you're gonna be making something cool. So like the um, you know like some illustrations we saw earlier or the, the visualization on the side of the building that, that Fiona just showed. It doesn't like necessarily like serve like make our lives easier or whatever, but it doesn't make it any less um, important as coding. So just a different approach. And we have libraries to help us do this like processing, uh, which is for desktop, one of the early ones. Now P5.js is a more recent one that we use for the web. Um, that's really popular. And so, yeah, the P5.js, we're gonna look at that in a moment, but it's um, the flows basically we have, we set up our stuff and then we just have a draw function that draws things to the screen. We're gonna be making this game called, which is called Pause is Hungry. Um, the original game, so Pause is really hungry. He's trying to get this, eat this yellow dot. And so he's just gonna keep on trying to get it. Uh, and you got, you can't let that happen. But if he does get it, then you lose and the game ends. So um, that's the game. Completely made with uh, processing. It's really, it's not even too many lines of code. But uh, before we can get into that, we're gonna spend, around 10 minutes or so, just playing around with uh, some of the uh, like functions we have here to work with. So, where is it? Okay. So in the repo, which let me know if you're having trouble accessing it. The first step is to clone this, clone the get, uh, repo code into a folder on your computer. Uh, on your computer. If you don't have git installed, you can also use this like p5.js as like a web editor. You can just like copy and paste the workshop code into it and play around there instead if you are not sure with, like not confident with Git. So 
If you are though, go ahead and copy that. And there's three folders here. So the intro folder is has just like kind of basic exercises. Uh, this game folder has the game like prompts to finish making the game that you have to fill in. And we'll give you the exact like docs to reference to figure out how to do that. And then game solution has the completed game I just showed you. So if you want to just like try it out, you can open that. Um, and you just have to run index.html. You just literally open it as a web page. Um, so I guess we can start by just walking through the files that we have here in the intro folder. Uh, Fiona, do you want to take some of these? Yeah, sure. So. Um, so we can start with the HTML file. Like we mentioned earlier, the way to add p5.js to um, a project is to include this script file, uh, the script tag on line 14. So that basically allows you to use p5.js throughout your code. Um, and then on line 16, we are adding the script, which actually like adds the um, any p5.js code that you write to your code. Um, and obviously we have the title and everything, but yeah, that the HTML file is pretty simple. Yeah, so babe, you, you guys don't have to worry about like importing it. This line just like grabs the entire p5.js library code in one JavaScript file, but you guys won't have to worry about that. You only have to worry about the script.js file in each folder, so. Yeah, so this file includes the first function which is preload. Um, it's similar to setup, but it I believe it runs before the setup. So um, that's a better place to load your data and everything, especially like if you need to um, change or modify that data in your setup function. And then the setup function, like we said, just runs once at the beginning of the execution of your code. And the one thing that you basically will always have in your setup is that create canvas function call with the window width and width and window height. So that sets the like canvas that you'll be drawing on the size um, and basically like readies p5.js for your drawing in that draw function. And then there are a number of basic um, visualization like sort of function calls. We drawing a circle is just a matter of writing circle. And then the, I'm trying to remember if it's with, or if it's X, Y, and then radius. I think it's X, X, Y, width. Okay, yeah. Um, so the three numbers, X um, position, Y position, and then the width of the circle you're drawing. Same with, if you want to do an ellipse and not a perfect circle, then you can do the width and the height, um, as you can see in line 20. And then um, square is basically the same idea, just writing square and then the X position, Y position and height uh, and like length, um, what's it, edge, edge length. Um, and then in, um, in line 20, I forgot to mention the mouse X and mouse Y, those are the sort of interactivity, some of the interactivity pieces we can use. So that tracks your mouse X position and mouse Y position. So that circle will actually follow your mouse. Um, and because this draw function runs all the time, then it will update as your mouse moves across the screen. Um, that mouse X and mouse Y variable, those will evaluate to whatever position you're at at the current time. So it won't just like draw once right at the beginning where your mouse starts. It'll follow your mouse throughout the um, time that you're running it. And then adding images is as simple as calling that image function and writing the X and Y position um, using whatever image you want. And then you can also add text. Um, we, you, that would be the text that you want to include and then the X and Y position. Yes, yeah, so, 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, so now um, you once you've cloned the repo, you can edit these variables and see how different changes affect the visualization of those um, objects. Yeah, so as you know, said, like when you run it, it it'll just look like this. It's just kind of like a uh, sort of like an array of stuff, but try changing around some of the variables, like changing the text, adding more shapes, um, changing the color, like just try playing around with it. That, that's like the best way to learn this. Um, every shape, like we link the docs in the code, like a comment in the code, so you can check those. Um, and then there's also a link right there the, the, next to the to do for like the reference. So all the other like things you can draw on it. Um, but they're all like pretty straightforward. It's just like the function and then you pass a couple arguments. So take some time now and play around with it and let us know if you have any questions about how to do anything or if you have any, like, or if you have any trouble copying the code or cloning the code and running it. So really quick, if you're still in the intro folder, that's totally fine. But if, if you're ready to move on to the game, um, it's in the game folder and like the root and um, just quick walk through. Um, yeah, so basically it's the, like most of the structures there, but for all these like to do prompts, you have to fill in the code. So like to do, you have to use load image here to load in the um, pause image. So and then we give you the, the page in the P5JS documentation that gives you the function that you'll need to be using to complete that step. So saying that with an, creating the canvas, um, yes, yeah, so basically just like fill in all the to do's. And after that's done, you should be able to run the game. And let us know if you have any questions with any of these, or like how to go about it. 